The FA Cup is one of the most sought-after prizes in English football. Between them, Everton and Chelsea have lifted the famous trophy nine times, and this year's final is their last chance for silverware. Can he get his shot away? Nicholas Anelka, the predatory instincts. Cahill! 15 minutes to go, and that could have put Everton through to the quarterfinals. This is Alex trying to wrap it up. Fantastic breakaway goal by Chelsea. And Trumpet is in again! Everton have knocked out Manchester United in the semis, and they'll play Chelsea on May the 30th. As we preview the 128th FA Cup final, we've got the Chelsea boss on the magic of the cup. That was always impressive worldwide. If you uh, know that the, that the FA Cup is played, you stay at home wherever you are. Everton haven't won a trophy in 14 years, but for Tim Cahill, there's no time like the present. It's an exciting time and a time for us to make our mark on, on, on football in general because uh, you know I think it's about time we got some silverware. Liverpool and West Ham serve at one of the Great Cup finals in our classic match. Gerard! Oh! Oh, goodness me! What a strike! And in the Cup final quiz, the pressure is on. Good grief, guys, give me a break. It's been two long years since Chelsea last enjoyed success. Can their departing general make it a fond farewell? The FA Cup final will bring the curtain down on Gus Hiddink's brief reign as Chelsea manager. The Dutchman has spent three months at the club, but that's been long enough to endear himself to both fans and players. Well, he's just a fantastic manager and his message is coming across. But when he joined Chelsea back in February, Hiddink was far from certain he'd be able to rejuvenate a disillusioned squad. When I came in February, everyone, including me, has sometimes a little bit of a preset mind knowing from a distance the players that I thought first I have to fight a lot with the players to get them in the same direction but uh, no none whatsoever because after one week I made the conclusion that this team reacted very well to what we said in this first week to each other and that was we don't give us time the manager to the team or the team to the manager uh, as an excuse not to perform. We, perf we tried to perform from the first day and players responded very well. Felipe Scolari failed to meet expectations. Owner Roman Abramovich set hitting a simple set of targets. First of all, I was asked to save the spots for giving a ride for Champions League next year, which we did. That was the first aim. Uh, on top of that, of course, we, we reset our aims to go into Champions League final and to go into uh, FA Cup final, which, uh, which we did regarding the FA Cup. And everyone knows the injustice about not reaching the, the Champions League final. Having seen his side come up just short in both Europe and the Premier League, Hiddink is concentrating on the FA Cup, a tournament that has always caught his eye. My first experience was uh, indeed uh, watching the game Watford. It was uh, a tremendous experience because everyone wants to be in the final. And even before many, many years, I followed also the, the FA Cup finals on, uh, on this May Saturday. And it's at this moment that we say welcome to the viewers all over the world who've just joined us here at Wembley Stadium. That was also always impressive worldwide. If you uh, know that the, that the FA Cup is played, you stay at home wherever you are in the world to see, to see this uh, big happening. Now Everton awaits, along with Tim Cahill, a player Hiddink knows only too well, having coached the Australian national team to the 2006 World Cup. Skillful player, very brave player, not being the tallest player, always dangerous in the box. So we have to keep an eye on him very, very, very carefully. And Everton are through to the FA Cup final. I think Everton is a very decent team. They, can, they are not just physical. It's a team uh, who can play very good football. But whatever the result, Hiddink will walk away from Chelsea with his head held high. I try to bring my, my knowledge and my spirit, hopefully, 
and experience a bit in, into the club. And the others can judge if, if it was uh, fruitful, yes or no. But for me, I think uh, I got a good response of everyone in this club and I challenged people uh, within the players group and outside the players group and everyone responded and that gives me personally a, a big satisfaction. This season we've travelled almost a thousand miles across the country on our road to Wembley. But here's how Everton and Chelsea reach football's showpiece finale through the eyes of Phil Neville and Solomon Kalou. Chelsea started with what looked like a home banker against League One South End United. That's the moment where we wasn't not playing so well, Chelsea, and we pull out 1-1, I score the first goal. And they come back in the last minute. I think it was a difficult game, very difficult again. And it's a small team and it's a cup game, so it's always hard. The spotlight was on Chelsea in the replay at Roots Hall. We won 4 1 and I score again. The team was really, really good. Everyone have a, everyone pulled out a, a good game. Everton's trip to Macclesfield was cup upset material. A real banana skin. For me, it was like going back to uh, the real roots of football. And uh, it was a real tough game. They, they absolutely uh, they battered us for, for, for periods in the game. And uh, you know we managed to get a goal just before half time through Leon Osman. It was a real eye opener for a lot of the, uh, particularly the foreign young lads. And uh, it was a great occasion for Macclesfield. And uh, they could have been proud of the way that they played. In round four, Championship side Ipswich Town came to Stamford Bridge. We didn't start so well. But, and then we, we win 3-1 with a great, great free kick from Bala and then Lamsey. Went for goal himself! Oh, what a screamer! Meanwhile, Everton faced the Merseyside derby against Liverpool at Anfield. Jody Nescott put Everton ahead with a first-half header. But as so often before, Steven Gerrard was the thorn in Everton's side. Oh, lovely ball from Torres. Here goes Steven Gerrard! But the replay at Goodison turned into a night to remember. What a title playing. For 20 minutes, Liverpool started really well and then Steven Gerrard went off injured. And from the minute he went off injured, you could sense the, uh, the belief, not just in the team, but in the stadium in general, that we were going to win the game. And uh, just a great, great way to finish the game, you know, to score in the last minute of extra time. When we played so well, we totally dominated the whole, the whole game. Uh, and for a young lad to score was a great occasion. Chelsea, struggling for form, were faced with a trip to Watford in round five. Manager in waiting, Gus Hiddink was in the stands to see Tamas Priskin put the Hornets ahead. I think it was a kind of wake-up goal for when they make that goal, because after that we score actually from Nico Anelka. And I make, the, I make an assist for him for the third goal. Once again, Everton faced Premier League opponents, this time Aston Villa. They were just beginning just to uh, hit a brick wall in the league at that time. Uh, and, and we were just hitting top form at this time. And uh, again, it was a young lad that scored the first goal in Jack Rodwell. Even though they equalised, you know, we managed to get the second goal. And from then on, we, 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 totally, uh, we totally cruised the game. And uh, it was a real, real top performance that day in the middle of a, a period in the season when we were playing probably our best football. Chelsea once again avoided top-flight opponents in the quarter-finals and had few problems beating Coventry City. We controlled the game. Did you score the first one? They didn't, they didn't really create a, a lot of chance. And we scored the second goal to kill the game. This is Alex, surely to wrap it up! It was a great performance for the team and he, he put us through the semi-final. And Everton were expected to overcome a struggling Middlesbrough. This game, everyone thought we were already at Wembley for the semi-finals, and uh, leading up to the game, I, w I was I was as scared and nervous about the uh, result that I was for the previous rounds. And uh, the first half, we put in our worst performance probably of the whole season. 
it was a real cup tie in the second half. We, we, we'd raised the tempo, we'd raised the speed, and we we overpowered Middlesbrough. I don't, I won't say we played our best football, but in terms of commitment and endeavour and power, we we we, we, we was brilliant. Wembley Stadium was the venue for the semi-finals, and after the shocks and upsets of last season, four of the Premier League's top six made up the semis, with Chelsea and Arsenal taking centre stage first. It was the beginning of a season-defining week for both clubs, with Champions League semi-finals looming for both Gus Hiddink and Arsene Wenger. Arsenal, which is an amazing team to play against, because you're sure that you're going to have a good game. Chelsea had last beaten Arsenal in the FA Cup 62 years earlier. Coming into this game, Wenger's side had lost only once in 25 matches. Chelsea would need all their experience. It was Arsenal's defence that looked suspect early on, though. Didier Drogba almost punishing Lucas Fabianski's moment of madness. Kieran Gibbs coming to the Poles' rescue. Fifteen minutes later, Gibbs was involved at the other end. His cross fan Theo Walcott, who volleyed past Petr Cech. Chelsea responded quickly. Frank Lampard's raking ball found the informed Florent Maluda, who beat Fabianski at the near post. Chelsea were on top. Abu Diaby was at muscle by Nicolas Anelka, who went so close. In the second half, both teams were lacking cutting edge in front of goal, and it appeared extra time would be needed to pick a winner. You know, we have an experienced team. We know how to, to wait. And I came on from 85 minutes. As soon as I came on, did the score the goal. The Ivorian pounced on more hesitant defending and put the Blues into the final. My second final, and uh, hopefully it will be the second FA Cup for me again. The next day, it was no Northwest affair as Manchester United and Everton came to London. Deep down with the cup run with dad, I just knew we were going to draw Man United and, and obviously we, we, we drew Man United, it was at Wembley, it was a semi-final, unbelievable occasion. Manchester United were still in contention to end the season with five trophies and Sir Alex Ferguson decided to hand starts to his younger squad members. In the week building up to the game, they were obviously massive favourites and then when, when everybody saw the team, I think the, probably the shift of pressure turned to us then. United started the better side, but the first half became a tight and scrappy affair, memorable only for Julian Lescott almost putting the ball into his own net. The teams went in at half-time goalless, but after the break, things improved. Tim Cahill testing Ben Foster. Then Danny Welbert looked to have been fouled by Phil Jagielka, Mike Riley waved away of claims for a penalty, sparking fury from Ferguson. With neither side able to break the deadlock, the game went to penalties. We never win when we take penalties. We've, we've got a goalkeeper in the pre previous two seasons that never saved a penalty, so you think to yourself, dear me, the odds, the odds are stacked against us. Everton's go-to man Cahill was shocked to see his fly over the bar. But Dimitar Berbatov and Rio Ferdinand missed successive penalties to turn the tide in the favour of the Toffees. Tim was fantastic, he'd, he'd done his homework and he really stepped up to the plate and uh, even though Tim Cale missed the first penalties, our penalties were really good as well and it shows that practice does mean that you can go out there and, and perform. Player of the season Phil Jagielka kept his cool to convert the winning penalty and put Everton into their first final since winning the cup in 1995. I just had a feeling, I had a feeling all week that it was going to be our day and uh, it was. Still to come, Tim Cahill's got one runners-up medal, he doesn't want another. I was fortunate enough to play in a final with Millwall um, and get a loser's medal and this hopefully will be the time that I get a, a winner's medal. And we've got a classic cup final between Liverpool and West Ham. In comes Gerrard! It's 14 years since Everton won a trophy, but the present squad are ready to bring that drought to an end. 
you know, it's an exciting time and a time for us to make our mark on, on, on football in general because, uh, you know, I think it's about time we got some silverware. Tim Cahill knows all about the power of the FA Cup. It's the tournament which helped his career take off. He was at Championship Millwall in 2004 when they were runners-up to Manchester United. Cahill scored the goal that got them to the final. We did some special things with such a great squad. So um, when I look back now, I'm very proud of what we achieved. And now, you know, obviously getting that goal in the, in the semi-final did put me on the map. But, you know, it was just through sheer hard work and it's something now that I've just kicked on from and, and hopefully taken myself to a different level. I'm just, just blessed that I was in that situation and I'm in this situation again to, to, to put it right and, uh, and have a chance of winning something. This season, Cahill's been indispensable. With several teammates sidelined by long-term injury, he's been used in various positions by manager David Moyes and always to good effect. Tim's done a great job. And uh, whether he plays in midfield, whether he plays up front, we know that we can use him in several different roles. And uh, he's, he's someone at the club who we look at. He sort of epitomises a lot of what we're about, our spirit, uh, playing for the team. And, you know, and he does all that. I've really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the fact that, uh, you know, if I have to play right wing or left wing, up front, in the middle, I'm playing football. It's such a pleasure to play with these lads because we all play for each other and there's no individuals. Cahill's in the rare position of knowing plenty about both managers at the Cup final. He's worked with David Moyes for five years now and Gus Hiddink was the Australian's national coach in 2006. Gus, complete ledge. Um, comes in and you know that he's stomped his authority before he's even walked in. He doesn't even have to open his mouth. Very honest, very blunt, but also a really nice guy. Some may say difficult to work under, but um, very direct. And I think it, you can say similar to, to David Moyes. Gives you uh, a message and you, you, you produce. And if you don't produce as a player, then you expect to be subbed or not playing. So you don't want a manager always praising you, you want a manager that, that tells you the truth and I think honesty as a footballer is probably the best thing. Everton players have the chance to join some legendary figures from the club's history. They've won the cup five times, most recently in 1995, and Moy senses he's on the brink of something special. I wouldn't say it's been overdue, but it's been coming. And, uh, you know, I think that there's a, a point now where we're due to win something. And uh, it won't just be this one, it'll be ones to come as well, you know. We're not just going to compete in this FA Cup final and then let it all uh, sort of dribble away. We're going to try and keep it going and we're going to try and look to the future and hopefully have many more of them. We've played some massive games leading up to this FA Cup final and not one player's been rested, not one player's pulled out of a tackle and not one player's even thought about the FA Cup final. And I think that that is the key to being winners, that's the key to trying to win something. Uh, the big thing is the, the group of players we've got, the stability we've got within the club, the players who we've got know how it works. I think if I wasn't there, they would know exactly what they have to do. So if I don't turn up at Wembley, I'm still very confident we can go and do a really good job. This is the time. You know, we've got a lot of big players in this team. I think um, we set high standards of ourselves to try and produce the highest levels we can throughout a season um, with such a small squad and such small funds. But um, you know, if we want to start achieving things and making things happen, then this is it. And for, for myself personally, um, I was fortunate enough to play in a final with Millwall um, and get a loser's medal, and this hopefully will be the time that I get a, a winner's medal. The last time Merseyside met London in an FA Cup final was in 2006, when Liverpool and West Ham met at the Millennium Stadium. The finalists have been separated by almost 30 points in the league, but on cup final day, there was virtually nothing between the two teams. Now Scaloni has made a run down that right side. Will sink to by Ashton Harewood. What's it in the middle? Oh, it's an own goal! In off Jamie Carragher and West Ham have taken the lead. Hetherington teasing Herpia. Oh, testing Rayner who lost it and it's in! From Dean Ashton! Unbelievable! Gerard. It's a lovely ball as well for Cissé! It's there this time. Here's Gerard. 
Giroud, the goal was blocked for a moment anyway. Goes Crouch, in comes Gerard, And they are back on level terms. Now Konczewski, mending his support down the left. Oh, it's in! Ball, Konczewski! And back of West Ham throats again. That's Risa, tossed it towards Morientes. And then Gerard! Oh! Oh, goodness me! What a strike from Steven Gerard! I told you, I told you, don't write them off. Captain Fantastic or what? At fault for two of West Ham's three goals, it had been a match to forget for Pepe Reina. But an extra time, the Spanish goalkeeper excelled himself, somehow keeping out Marlon Harewood's header. And so, for the second successive year, the cup final went to penalty shootout. Haman against his lot and scores eventually. Bobby Zamora, oh, he saved it! Here comes Herpia, oh, that's been saved as well! Teddy Sheringham. Can he beat Reina? He can! Eyes staring, focused, and he scores. Kaczewski! Reina again! Too strong, drop Risa. 3-1. It's Ferdinand, saved again by Reina. And Liverpool have won the FA Cup. From zero to hero, Reina had saved three of West Ham's five penalties and captain Steven Gerrard lifted the trophy as Liverpool won the FA Cup for the seventh time. We wrap things up with our cup final quiz. In the Everton corner, we have Phil Neville and Tim Cahill. Opposing them is Chelsea's assistant coach, Ray Wilkins. Question one, the first final to go to penalties was between Arsenal and Manchester United in 2005. But who was the first player ever to miss in a cup final shootout? My God. I'm not good with quizzes. Where's my clue? Think. I'm going to go Rio Ferdinand. I think it was Paul Scholes. Not Scholesy, is it? Scholesy. Did he miss a penalty? Yes, he did, Tim. It was Paul Scholes who saw his penalty brilliantly saved by Jens Lehmann. Wow, he doesn't normally miss, does he? Question two How many cup finals did Everton get to during the 1980s? Oh, my God. I know they got to the 85 final, because I think United beat them 1-0, on the white side. I think it was two. Two? Three. You're all wrong. Four is the correct answer. Everton were finalists in 84, 85, 86 and 89, but only lifted the trophy when they beat Everton in 84. Four? Good grief, I do apologise. Chelsea have had plenty of FA Cup success recently, but which former Blues player won the Cup in the 80s, the 90s and this decade? Ooh. First person that springs to mind is uh, Glenn Oddle, but uh, I don't think he played in the 90s. Good grief, guys, give me a break. 80s, guys. Okay, me. Why is he on there? Why is he? Why is he? Dennis Wise. Correct, Dennis Wise was part of Wimbledon's crazy gang in 1988 and then twice captain Chelsea to victory in 97 and later in 2000. Question four, who was the first player to miss a penalty in a Wembley FA Cup final? First player, was he a striker or was he a defender? John Aldridge. John Aldridge? Need a clue. No clues, Tim. It was Liverpool's John Aldridge, whose penalty was saved by Wimbledon's Dave Besant. John Aldridge. Of course I remember John Aldridge. I know him, but I was young. 
And finally, which clubs won the FA Cup more times, Chelsea or Everton? Everton. Chelsea. Everton. The answer is Everton, who won the Cup on five occasions. Chelsea are one behind. So the final scores, <laughs> Ray with two points. Tim has three oh, points. But our winner with four out of five is Phil Neville. So as another FA Cup comes to its conclusion, there's just time to look back at some of the more memorable moments from this season's competition. Let's hope the 128th Cup final is a classic. Thanks for watching and goodbye.